room coordination. Okay, you need some way to coordinate rooms. If you're in more than five chairs, uh, you know, I had a plan that I was gonna sneak up on somebody that was sleeping. Tim and I had hatched a plan and I wanna thank you in advance that I, I didn't get to pull that because I was really excited and I was gonna sneak up behind you and like, it didn't work. So uh, thank you for paying attention, but okay, so room coordination. You need somebody, if you're in more than five chairs, you gotta have somebody knowing what's going on on the floor and not the dentist. Because the dentist, if I got three rooms going, okay, I, that, I'm in the zone. And so somebody's got to be watching that we're on time, that the game's going the way it's supposed to be going, okay, so that we can stay on schedule. Because I am getting lunch, and I am getting everybody out on time. Okay, it's a commitment. So what do you do for room coordination? Manual. You know, you got to have somebody go in a room, go, doctor, next patient's here. That works great. Okay, so you're the patient in the chair. And somebody just came in and said, hurried up. <laughs> Great plan, okay? Really makes that patient comfortable. Okay, so that's probably not the best plan. Lights, lights work fine for five chairs and under. And that's five total chairs. My experience is once you get beyond five chairs, you get like all these arcane codes for people. And I, I'm just, maybe you guys are smarter than I am, but I just get confused easy. So most offices that are bigger than that, you just have a bunch of noise going off and nobody's paying any attention to it. You could run a physical board. You've got 10 chairs. You can have somebody running the board. Okay. Now that's a formal room coordinator, somebody that's on the floor watching who's coming in and who's going out and when they're coming in and when they're coming out. And I mean, this is a good example. This is somebody that cares about their customer service. And then they know where people are and where, and where you're supposed to go. That's a little bit more of a job, and I already told you I'm kind of lazy, so I, if you're under 10 rooms, this isn't my favorite way to go. 17 chair office, you probably have somebody on the floor that's basically expediting to go ahead and do that. Computers, there are a lot of programs written to go ahead and do this. I have two, I've used five of these programs. I like the people that are making these. I understand the concept. I think they're thinking right that there's got to be a way to do this. My problem is it kind of needs to be on my iPad or you know, on my phone, and I need to, it needs to be here. If it's on the computer, I'm not standing next to the computer staring at the screen all the time. I'm wandering around. So if I got to get to a screen to see what's going on, that's been a problem with these. And they're just not sticky enough. So a whole bunch of them. And, and, and really, I mean, people spend a lot of energy, a lot of time on these. Someone may break through with these, but we've had every one of these has been torn off by my staff. I mean, I put them up, I experiment with them, I force them to go ahead and use it, and you know, I just come in one day and they go like, we're, we're done with this. Okay, well, the best thing we found is this, just wearing a wire. Now here's, the, here's how to make this work. Seven to eight words total, that's it. Doctor, ready room three, hygiene check. End of story. Don't give me the story, it's a broken tooth, and it's bleeding, it's been three years, and it's like, no. Okay, just give me the where do I go, and when, and what's the priority. So you'll have someone, for us, three o'clock in the afternoon tends to be, there's just like emergencies have started to pile in, there's other stuff added to the schedule in the places where I didn't, I had some gaps, right? You saw those places where I was dreaming about having a donut? I'm not getting a donut, okay? Because they're adding some stuff in, okay? They're not double booking it, but they're adding it in where there were gaps, and so, and I don't know, because I haven't paid attention, because I'm in the zone looking at my rooms, and so somebody's gonna sweep from the front, in the, in the seven chair office, they're gonna sweep from the front, and they're gonna go ahead and go, three, five, seven. So I need here, okay? So I know I got the hygiene check in three, then I get the hygiene check in five, and then I go to room seven to go ahead and do anesthesia. Okay, that's how it's working, okay? And that's when we're getting slammed. So here's what it looks like when I'm getting slammed. She got the principle on that? Yeah. Yes. Is, is knowing how to machine 
That's a good question. So in the, in the huddle, do we have doctors assigned to hygienists, et cetera? The answer is no. Okay, whoever gets there first. Okay, first of all, I, in the seven chair office, there's no other doctor. I'm getting four rooms and they're getting three and we're going to eight on that, so we got three hygienists, okay, in four rooms. So we can rotate them, because three and three is not good enough, because I don't have the flexibility to add in treatment. Okay, but I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna run six hour shift in that office, because it's a smaller office, and then somebody else is gonna run a six hour shift, back to back. Okay, so there's gonna be one doctor doing three hygiene checks per hour staying on time. I promised that I would get to that, and I'll, if I don't get it right here, I'll show you how we do that. Dr. Okay. Dr. Ann? Yes? I, I'd like a little more information about the wire. Who wears the wire? Where are you? <laughs> I'm behind the tall man. Oh, okay, back. there you go. Yeah, you're too tall. There I am. Okay, thank you. Okay, who wears the wire? Everybody wears a wire. People try not to wear a wire, we make them wear a wire, okay? Like everybody's wearing a wire. Because if you're not wearing a wire, some offices have the doctor not wear a wire. Okay, so some of them just have the doctor just in the bubble, and the doc and they're just pointing the doctor where to go. That's fine. Okay, I want to know everything that's going on. And if it's like jokes Fridays, it's the rules change, and you can put jokes on the. I want to know those too. Okay, that's just me. But again, you can do it another way. You know, you're in ten chairs, and ten chairs you start getting more noise, and you might have two doctors in at the same time. And so there's noise you don't need to have. So in your situation, you get like 10 chairs, two doctors. You, you may assign out, you're taking these people, you're taking these people. Basically, I still prefer whoever's available. We want to kind of cross doctors over to see every patient so that when I'm not there, nobody cares. Like, you know, I, the best thing is when I come into my office and somebody says, Who, is that the doctor? It's like, yeah, he's one of them. Yes. Yeah, he's an old guy. Okay, that's a whole lesson dream come true. Okay, choice of treatment coordination, okay? So the question is a treatment coordination. Another thing as you get a little bigger is how do you coordinate discussions about treatment? Do you bring the patient to the treatment coordinator or you bring the treatment coordinator to the patient? I will tell you in the office, I mean again, in a 13% in a unemployment area, we needed to go ahead in a cold start office, no existing patients. When we decided to sweep new patients in, which we needed to do, half of those patients are advertising patients. Those folks, I'm not trying to go ahead and tell them about the 20 things they need in terms of treatment. It's not a good plan. Okay? What I need to tell them is about what they told me they want me to do. Okay, it's a different model now. So I gotta tell them that, then once they've decided they're okay with that, I need to know everything, but I don't need to tell them everything. I need to say, there's a bunch of other stuff, but you want me to do this, I will do that. Okay, I don't wanna sweep them into a closing room to do that, because if I sweep them into the closing room, then I gotta get them back, it's a consult room, okay? Then, then I gotta get them back in the chair to do the dentistry. I'd rather keep them in the room and move the, move the treatment coordinator to the room, yes. Document it. Document it. Document it. I document it. So the question is, what do you do to document that? I say needs multiple restorations. Discuss the fact that they may need, you know, lose teeth if they don't go ahead and continue to pursue care. But I'll tell you, and this is going to be controversial. If you go ahead and subject them to 40 minutes of charting every single tooth they need when they got one tooth that hurts, and you make them sit there for 40 minutes as you do a drawing project on a computer software in front of them, you might as well just give them an eye poke. You're like, boom. Okay, I'm drawing this because I like drawing, and then maybe we'll get to your problem. That is not appropriate relationship to start with that patient. That's my opinion. I reserve the right to be dead wrong on that. Okay, so you can move them to a place, okay? I think you need to have a consult room. We talked about that yesterday. But my preference is to move the treatment coordinator or front desk person to the room, which is private, and allow them to go ahead and discuss that care right then and there. What's it supposed to be like? Not this. Not supposed to be like this. It's supposed to feel more like this. It's a relationship. And if the relationship isn't a one-on-one -on -one relationship, then we kind of blew it. 